Some questions are worth a very close look, and on today's episode, I want to take you along with me as I investigate a very, very important subject. What is a blues breaker? So there are a few different types of people watching this episode. Some of you are saying the blues breaker is obviously an old amplifier. Others are saying it's a guitar pedal. Well, you're both correct. And to understand why that is, we need to go back to where it all started around 1962. In the early 60s, a drummer named Jim Marshall was importing early Fender amplifiers into London for the booming music scene. Two of his associates, Ken Brand and Dudley Craven, suggested to Jim, hey, let's stop importing these in and just build them ourselves because the shipping and taxes are killing us. And that's exactly what they did. Marshall successfully builds their first amplifier and they base it around that 1959 Tweed Basement that you saw. One thing that made the Marshall unique is that the parts in London are very, very different than the parts that Leo Fender used in California. This resulted in a unique sound for the guitar market and it's a pretty big part of guitar history. The first unit was the 1962 JTM Head and then two years later we got the 410 combo and the 212 combo. The circuit was intended to be used by bass players, but when you plug into it with an electric guitar and crank the volume, it's extremely magical. And one guitar player that proved its magic more than any other was Eric Clapton. In 1965, a young Eric Clapton walks into Jim Marshall's shop and asks for an amplifier that's powerful enough to play live, but small enough to fit into the boot, or as us Americans say, the trunk of his car. He gets the 212 JTM combo that you just saw, and he gigs with it for over a year. Then he joins a brand new band, John Mayall and the Blues Breakers. They go into the studio and they track this record just like they were playing live on the club scene in London. And that means they're playing really, really loud. Eric plugs his 1960 Les Paul directly into the amp and cranks it with no isolation. So it's bleeding everywhere into all the microphones and it sounds amazing. This album explodes and it's credited for the birth of the British blues rock scene in the 60s. Now that JTM45212 combo from that point on is forever affectionately called the Blues Breaker. Get it? Blues Breaker? That's enough talking about it, you want to hear it. I first want to give a big thanks to Sweetwater because I didn't have this amp and they loaned it to me, so thank you Sweetwater. In 1991, Marshall released an English-made line of pedals based around some of their more popular classic amplifiers. One of them was the Black Box Blues Breaker. Don't ever, ever confuse these two pedals. They made this about a decade later. It's a good pedal, but it's not this one. And now that that's out of the way, let's continue. This line of pedals did not do that well, actually, and they were discontinued fairly soon. Nobody really cared about them until 2006 when John Mayer releases Continuum and puts guitar playing back on the map in several ways. This was clearly seen in his rigs at the time, and they have become very, very expensive, and for good reason. It's a really great pedal. But does it sound like the amp? I think you need to decide that, so... We're gonna play a little jam and use this through my MiG-50, which is a basement style amp, into a closed back 212 cab versus the uh, Blues Breaker combo that you saw. Keep in mind that the closed back cab that this pedal's going through will change the mids a little because the original combo is open. It'll just have a different mid-range thing, but in a band context, I'm gonna leave it up to you if it sounds like the amp or not.
next evolution of the Blues Breaker circuit comes in 2003 when Analog Man creates and releases the King of Tone. It's a pedal based around the topology of the 91 Black Box Blues Breaker made in England, but it's very, very different. He was the first guy to use this circuit as a topology and he brought it into the boutique market and a lot of guys like myself have followed in his footsteps with our own versions. I released the Morning Glory in 2008. Wampler put out the Pantheon this year. We have the Black Box by Snaus and even Robert Keeley has taken a stab at this circuit with the 1962. The thing that's important to realize is just like Jim Marshall was going after the 59 Baseman circuit, but created a very different amplifier, that's what happens with pedal topology. So when you see someone on a forum or you see someone discussing that the King of Tone is just a clone of the Blues Breaker, they're really, really wrong. You can take a topology and create a really beautiful new and unique thing, and that's exactly what him and many others have done with this circuit. I'm actually gonna use the Prince of Tone, which is just one side of the bigger King of Tone, and uh, we're gonna put these guys side by side. This is actually so different that it's not even worth a shootout. I'm gonna use this for lower gain, and you're gonna see the knobs are pretty much in the same setting, and this has a really beautiful lead tone, so that's how I'm gonna use it. thing that I have to talk about in the evolution of the JTM45 Blues Breaker into the world of guitar tone is the fact that there's an entire genre of pedals called amps in a box. Now within this genre there are a lot of pedals that say this pedal sounds like a JTM45. They're not talking about the Blues Breaker and you'll never see the combo mentioned in the copy, but in theory, if it sounds like the head, it should sound like the combo. The only difference is that two speakers are attached to that combo and none to the head. Let's look at a few of these. We have the Rocket 45 Caliber. We have the Box of Rock by Zvex. We have the JTM by Love Pedal, and we even have my own Charlie Brown. In theory, these JTM 45 amps in a box should sound like the Blues Breaker combo. And I think we need to put it to the test. I'm gonna shoot out the Charlie Brown with the actual amp. And just keep in mind, I'm gonna play this through that Sovtech with the closed back cab. So there's a little difference in the mids, but once again, in a band context, I think you should be the judge on do these amps in a box JTM 45 pedals actually have the Blues Breaker sound?
after all this is said, what is a bluesbreaker? Is it an amp? Is it a pedal? Is it a pedal based on an amp? Is it an amp that was always an amp, even though a pedal was based on itself and then became another pedal? Is it a pedal that was based on a pedal that was based on an amp, but the pedal based on the pedal that was based on the amp is actually nothing like the amp or the pedal? Is it something cosmically genius? Is it something outside of our comprehension? Is it bigger than life? Is it like philosophy meets science, meets biology, meets all of my dreams and your dreams? What if our dreams are colliding? What if the blues breaker is us? What if we are the blues breaker? Blues breaker. What if inside of us, the blues breaker lives yeah, blues and breathes? Breaker. What if everything we are is a blues breaker. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Today's record time is brought to you by two records, one that made the blues breaker amplifier famous and one that made the pedal famous. John Mayer's Continuum made the pedal famous and John Mayle's blues breaker album made the amp famous. John Mayle, John Mayer. John Mayer, John Mayle, John Mayle, John Mayer, Mayer, John Mayle. This could be proof of a cosmic. Never mind, we're not gonna go there. Let's just start with John Mayle and the Blues Breakers album. I already talked about how loud he played, but here's a couple little nuggets of nerdy information for you. He actually requested that we do not put the amp in another room because I don't wanna have to listen to my guitar through headphones. Now, by doing that, that basically put the amp in the room with everyone else and it bled into all the microphones and it was brutally loud. On the back of the record, you can see the studio here and I can only imagine how crazy loud and insane it was in that studio, but what they captured is magical. And another little note is this album is often referred to as Beano. Now, Eric Clapton is seen right here looking at a copy of the Beano comic book. Just a nerd fact, you need to know this stuff. And then John Mayer's Continuum. This album is spectacular. It's something really huge for me. It made me love guitar in a different way. And the guitar playing on it, like I said earlier, brought guitar back into the forefront of some popular music. We hear him using the Blues Breaker pedal into loud, clean amplifiers and primarily with a Strat. So it's a really good display of that pedal and the perfect display of the amp. If you haven't heard these, check them out. If you have, revisit them. And in the comments below, tell me about some people that have used the Blues Breaker or JTM45 amplifiers and anyone else you know of that has used the Blues Breaker pedal. Here you go. Thanks so much for watching this episode. The Blues Breaker pedal circuit is incredibly important to me as one of my best-selling pedals is based around that. And then when I look back through history at all of these stories and how guitar gear got to where it was, so much of it started with Eric Clapton and that John Mayle session. So all that said, I'm really glad you could come along for this ride and look at this really important story. If you did like this episode, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. In the comments below, tell me your favorite jam that we did. And also let me know if you'd like to see some future episodes comparing some of the Blues Breaker based pedals as I'd love to do that as well. And that's all for today. Have a good one.